when Arsenal knocks on the door of players, it's a different knock than other clubs, 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 clubs. Hello, I'm Louis Theroux. Welcome back to the Rohan Jeevan podcast. How are you doing? You all right? <laughs> what? Hi, I'm Louis. <laughs> How are you? What's going on? How are you, Rohan? Very good. Rohan, can I ask, you seem to be quite interested in this Arsenal football club. Yes. Why is that? Why is that? And you started your own podcast. Why is that? Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Can I ask? Is that right? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it's not bad. It's not a bad impression. Do you know who oh, I'm who? doing? Oh, no, Louis I'm Theroux. Not Louis Who's Theroux. That? Who's that? I was, I'm, honestly, I've never been this confused with you ever before. What, what are you even doing? <laughs> Go on, tell me who it is. You don't know okay. who Louis Theroux is? No, no. Chat, let Rohan know. He's I, would, he's, I would check he's my gone. phone. You know who oh. Louis Theroux is? You know who he is? Look him up. Louis Theroux is this guy, wait. Oh, I can't, you don't know who Louis Theroux is? It's like, it's like a Louis? British broadcasting legend. Louis Theroux. This guy. Oh, I've, seen, I've seen his face, but oh, mate. <sighs> What's so good about him? <laughs> My whole opener just ruined. <laughs> just ru I thought it'd be a quick, you know, ha ha, oh, that's funny. Then move you should on. should have started with a Gary Keane. No. Roy no, no, I refuse. No. <laughs> I will not be I will not be restrained to football. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Rohan Jeevan podcast, everyone. How you doing? Hope you are well. Uh with Rohan Jeevan and Jeevan's mates. Rohan Jeevan, star of the show. How are you, sir? Very good. That's Very it. Good. He did the my money don't jiggle jiggle. It falls. I want to see you wiggle wiggle for oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, but that guy. I, I feel like your impression was off. <laughs> <clears throat> so we've got a big show tonight big show on the Rohan Jeevan podcast we want to go through Rohan's article how are you feeling about me calling it the Rohan Jeevan podcast so far I can tell you're deeply uncomfortable um, <laughs> well, I will continue to do it uh, we want to go through Rohan's article you wrote for Gunners Town because I think there's some good stuff in there that it was yeah you know some good stuff I would argue I've got some feedback as well um, uh, <laughs> uh, I've got I'm not going to give it to you on podcast uh, oh, I'll give it to me. Do it. I'm absolutely not going to give you the <laughs> feedback on the podcast. Um, how to stop City? Uh, I think we should discuss that. We want to talk about Saka leaving the Indian squad. Uh, I think there's a bit on Ben White in England. I'd like to yeah. talk about Southgate, United, the sort of managerial merry-go-round potentially this summer. I want to talk about Alexander Isaac um, and get because uh, we, we've seen some links. I don't hate the idea. I want to talk about the Bayern matchup. And I've got a question for you at the end. Of course, we're going to take your questions as well. So v Vlad says that article was very good. Rohan needs to write more. Yeah, and I need to get off it after an hour, so it's going to be an absolute nightmare. <laughs> um, smash the likes up, everyone! Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to TDK Live. Yeah. How are you, Rohan? Yeah. How's life? I'm actually, I'm actually doing very good. Very good. Good. Splendid. Good. Superb. Yeah. Outstanding. And, and this is this is what they call in the business a link. <clears throat> and are you feeling? I no. Hang on. Are you feel you're not you're not but you can't be you're there's you're feeling good, but Saka's feeling bad. There you go. I've done oh. it. Oh Saka's feeling bad as he leaves the England camp. Did, that Rumor was really it. he's got a tummy ache. Um Babs uh <laughs> said once said he couldn't do a canon podcast because he had a watery eye. <laughs> this reminds me of that. Oh, what? So, Saka's at the England camp. That is it's kind of objectively good news, I think, to to, to some degree, because it's it's it feels very kind of uh, De Bruyne pulls a two week sickie before being absolutely fine. 
um, et cetera, et cetera. It's something I've wanted us to get better at. And um, I know Mikel Arteta listens to me. Must do. Must do. Um, so, uh, yeah, thoughts? I mean, there's not, you know, not loads to analyze, but it's, I think it's, I'm, I'm pleased to see that we are um, being smarter. Let's put it that way. City have always done this over the years yeah. during this period where they just they, they go away on international duty and then a few days later, oh he's pulled out, oh he's pulled out, oh he's pulled out. And it's just like it's just happening day after day after day. We need rice next. That's that's the next big one. And then we're, we're yep. cooking. Yep. But, cooking. R- rice. See? So I've got to do another link. And and we no, I can't do it. Um, the the overlap there was a no uh, what's it called sticks to football they did an episode uh, today and Gary Neville was talking about it and he said that Alex Ferguson in March would just call up the England manager and be like I'm they're not coming <laughs> <laughs> and then just deal with it <laughs> and like the thing is is I was thinking about this earlier that relationship between a national team manager and especially in England and the managers of City Liverpool and so on he doesn't want to piss Arteta off so I know we kind of there is a slightly why have they changed the badge uh, type um, England fan, which I get, who is kind of like, no, club, you know, country over it. You know, that, that's the most important thing. But actually for an England manager to maintain those relationships and to go, okay, he probably has a, a, a knock and he could probably, a different knock, and probably could stay. Yeah. But to maintain this relationship, because Saka, like Saka and Rice are massive parts of England now. They both start for England. And I was also thinking, on the way to uh, buying myself a steak for dinner, I was also thinking, because um, I actually think about what I'm going to say before I say it. And I, I, it doesn't seem that way, but it does, I actually have thought about this. <laughs> I, like, players like Jared Branthwaite, players yeah. like Jude Bellingham, like, players who are, you know, aren't necessarily at those top clubs. Where's the next logical step? I'm not saying they're going to come to Arsenal. But, you know, they will, it's pretty likely, they go to a Liverpool or United or an Arsenal, or, you know, whatever. So if, if that's the next logical step in their, in their careers, for, for some of them, I'm not saying specific cases. So it's not just now, uh, you know, but looking at Arteta, he looks like he's set for a period of dominance. I'm sure Southgate sees that and goes, I don't want to annoy this guy. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, exactly. it's all about a relationship. Yeah, I think, um, like I said, I find that crazy with Ferguson. I, I've, I've seen that as well. Where you just say, yeah, they're not going. And, mm. and he just has that authority. And you don't want to annoy the, those types of people in the business as well. And um, I, I think, you know, you have to look at a priority, right? And I think for, a, I reckon a lot of players like Saka, Rice, they want to play regardless of it's Arsenal yep. or England. But you have to also apply context and look at the meaning of these games relative to what Arsenal are trying to achieve this season, bearing in mind the fixture schedule as well and how, my God, it, it looks horrible yeah. in terms of the number of games that we have. So I, I, I want us to get better at it. It seems like we are getting better at it. Only time will tell if it is an injury or not. You know, we we, we think it's not an injury, but it's, imagine. It's, it's... <laughs> I don't know, but imagine. Imagine. But imagine, yeah, imagine, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Then, then I'm thinking, yeah, oh, yeah. for God's sake, we haven't learned really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, no, we'll see, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I, I think that relationship is interesting. And we, I don't think we've been in a position as a club before to kind of throw our weight around a little bit. Like when we had like just Smith Rowe in the England squad, yeah. <laughs> we can't do that. But yeah. now we, we do have a bit of clout. We have, you know, Ramsdale as well, you know, and we can start to be like, look. I do think though, when on, cool. under Arsene, that was one of uh, one of the things that I got frustrated with that, you know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't take that Ferguson type of route he mm. would happily let his players go irrespective of what's happening and yeah. I think even under the Arteta tenure it's felt like that as well where if an Arsenal player it, it comes back it's usually through an injury as opposed to dark arts but yeah. hopefully this is more to come because I don't care about international football honestly I, I really don't care I care I, about I, how it relates to Arsenal and I care about the tournaments yeah. but I don't care about that actually, do not, do not, let, me, let me retract that actually I care about how the Arsenal players do so. For example, in a tournament, if England lost 6 0, but Saka was the best player on the pitch, I've walked away with something. I don't care. I don't care. Honestly, I've walked away with something. The things I, I said, the things I said to my TV after Harry Kane missed that penalty. <laughs> things I said should never be repeated. Um, I take this point about Ben White, but I do think the Ben White situation is a, is a special situation. I don't think that's related to England. What about the Gabriel one? I don't know, but I, ju- I just think that what I'm saying is that. That relationship between the head coaches of 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 top clubs, 
and the head coaches of big internationals, we forget that, you know, like, uh, until today, I hadn't really thought about it. Yeah, they, they need each other. And actually, that you know, obviously there will be some relationships that are better and worse. But, you know, to be able to, you know, Gary Neville was talking about it, to be able to do deals with your kind of international team manager and go, you can't have him now, but you can have him then. It's kind of useful. So I think it's, you know, I mean, the March International is, is a kind of weird one anyway. Like, I don't, I don't think, I just don't think it should exist that it, this is it's an international break. It just feels so, yeah, I don't know. It feels so stupid. <laughs> just, it feels yeah. so stupid. Uh, people asking in the chat before we move on, how do you eat your steak? I don't eat steak. Medium rare. Medium rare. <laughs> Any other answer is wrong. My mum, love her. Love you, mum. <laughs> Great woman. Gail, Gail Muddy Penny. Legend. Gail. Um, what a name. That is a Love you, name. Gail. Love you, Gail. Right. She does overcook her steaks. I will say that. But, like, for example, but you can eating, forgive her. But if you're eating, like, lamb, then, if you're eating lamb, yeah. Yeah. But you want, it, you, you, want it, it, you want it falling off the bone. You don't want... You, you, or, you oh, know, I'm, 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 with, I'm with Gail Moneypenny. Overcooking. Well, you want overcooked food. Overcooked meat, yeah. yeah. Right, chat. Speaking yeah. of cooking, cook this man. <laughs> no, no. Cook nah, this nah, man. I'm, I'm right. I'm definitely right. So if you if you were to order a steak, you get it well done? Yes. But I and can't you don't know who steak, Louis Theroux is? But, but I don't know Louis we, Theroux. We're going to fall out. I think we're going to fall out. <laughs> I think we're yeah, not going to be friends. It's going to be over overcooked, overcooked. Shamsdale says, my dad eats his steak. Well done. It was a bloody nightmare growing up. Exactly. It's that called builds... overcooked for a reason. Why on earth? Steak well done is the only choice. It's the only choice. Come on. Come on. Yes, Adrian, Pick you stop. are right. Well done. <laughs> 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 you probably shouldn't be eating meat. Uh, can't yeah, have your own podcast. You prefer well done. Get rid of it. <laughs> Get rid of him. You've gone. It's it's back. It's back to the. Uh, it's, it's it's back to the. T it's back to TDK live. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of uh, your own podcast, you did write a, br a genuinely. Can I just say a genuinely brilliant article? And I know we're like, I haven't actually said that to you in person. In person, you know what I mean. But you know, in to 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 yourself. Um, but uh, yeah, it's genuinely brilliant. It is a really intense and good deep dive look at uh, on gunner is it gunnerstown.com you yeah, can find it on rohan's yeah. can you see this by the way yeah i can see it I can see yeah it. um on uh, arsenal's out of possession display basically talking through the principles talking through a number of uh, game situations from both the man city game and the liverpool game there uh, yeah I, I definitely go go have a read it's quite long rohan i know i know but the, the, the only is with me right i don't look get at this guy <laughs> You've got a full time job. I know, but tell you what, I've, I've, it's taken me about two weeks to do. To be fair, so I don't, I don't really shit. But what the issue I had, Alex, is that Go on. I think you already know my L and my O on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> so I was proofreading this many times. I've got obviously words. I've got uh, I, I, was, I was grammar checking everything. But I was thinking one thing that'll kill me is like small little spelling mistakes. I'm pretty sure there's none. It, there might be like one or two, but I I hadn't noticed any. What I had noticed is some is some great words. I right on the bus home last night, I was looking some up because I didn't know them. What was one propagated? Yeah, I've never yeah. heard you use propagated in your life. <laughs> so right, right, okay, right. This is where my engineering side comes into it. So so in like so I'm a stress engineer, um, and we we look at like components and their. Uh, how they fatigue and then how they, they they fracture. So, in a component where you get a crack, that's a crack initiation. But then, as that 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 goes through the entirety of the component, that propagates and it gets larger. <laughs> oh no, it is pretty boring. It is pretty. It is pants. It is pants. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> That was so mean. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I honestly. To the bit, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> that actually makes sense. That is funny. Um, what was I going to say? And there was another one. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so oh, that was so funny. Was oh, so God, absolutely roasted there. <laughs> that was so rude. <laughs> no, no, it was funny. It was funny. You know me. I don't take things like that. Oh, yeah. God. Uh -huh. that was uh, well, there was another one. You did a good one. You did a good. Oh, it doesn't matter. Whatever. There was a, there was a lot of quite good words in there. Is what I'd say. Anyway, the bit I want to pick out is: uh, can we? Can you talk us through 
this the sort of the city uh yeah, the yeah, press because yeah. this i think this is useful in terms of i want to talk about how we beat city so this is yeah. kind of a useful sort of sort of blueprint because this is the community shield game yeah. and one of the things that i wanted us to focus on is how the press adapts and how the, the the situations where we're zonal the situations where we're man to man the situations where we step back into the mid block what that is triggered by and to show yeah but not only that how adaptable it is but yeah in this situation what we what we actually did um so maybe, maybe talk us through these slides yeah, and, and whenever yeah, you want to go just say next slide please okay cool cool right <laughs> so I, I i did this because i you know that was like... it attenuate sorry attenuate yeah so it's remove remove like i was thinking you know I think I, I said attenuate external noise. So like block it out, block out external noise. I had to look it up. I had no idea. Yeah. Attenuate. Again, that's, that's, that's like engineering, like physics. <laughs> Nick Campbell. <laughs> Rohan's a stress engineer, but engineers a document that stresses the reader with how long it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> oh, I love it. Right. Come on, let's oh, do you're this. You're killing me. You're killing me. Go for it. That Talk comment's killed me. So, so yeah, I, I, I think um, thinking when I was doing this this article, I was thinking why Arsenal are the best team out of possession in the world right now, in my opinion. I think the numbers back it up as well, and you, and you can see it throughout the article. And the two best games to look at are against your title rivals. You know, you look at Manchester City, you look at Liverpool, and Manchester City. The Community Shield performance is a lot more representative because Rodri was playing. Rodri is so, so key for Manchester City. For me, he's the best midfielder, holding midfielder in the world, undoubtedly in possession, hands down. His ability to dictate, break lines, etc. no one bets him on that front. And I, I, I took motivation from what we did at the Etihad last season um, in the 4-1 defeat and how Arteta used that as a valuable learning experience. And he, he, he used what, what, what happened in that game as a way of becoming better against the elite, against mm. Guardiola. And we've, got, we've had two games against Manchester City, you know, where... We've won both. We've won both games and we've conceded an XG of under two. And that's not discussed games. enough, by the way, that because you made this point in the article as well, the lessons that have been learned from that 4-1 away at the Etihad. Yes, okay, we had he who must not be named and so on. And we did have the injuries. We, well. also, we also learned some big lessons, which yeah. which again is, is is kind of not mentioned. It's just, well, Arsenal should be beating City. That's, if that's what they want to do to win the title, yeah. yes. But how did we do that? That's what yeah, your that's... article brilliantly breaks down. Carry on. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, and I, I mentioned it, you know, that having a Rob Holding in your team is going to massively affect you from achieving a, a decent result against the Manchester City. That's facts, right? But we can't attribute everything to Rob Holding. And there were things that I think we did we'll, very well. We'll bloody try. <laughs> we'll all try. And we we did it in the Patreon. We'll try. And I'll, the stuff I said, and I'm not going to get into it. I've actually been on Shadow Band as well on Twitter. <laughs> So, in that game um, at the Etihad, it was a very similar structure to what Manchester City deployed uh, in the Community Shield, which was this 2-4-4 build-up shape. You can't see a Kanji who's on the far left of Diaz, but, but that was the structure that they deployed in the Community Shield, and they did exactly the same at the Etihad, with slightly Brilliant. different personnel. Um, yeah, he's, he's around there. So, what Manchester City did, did really well at the Etihad is that they, they baited Arsenal into engaging really high, and they exploited the space present between um, behind the last line, where Rob Holding was, where Gabriel was, and where Thomas Partey was effectively left on an island, who, you know, we saw his form really, really deplete towards the, the latter stage of the last season. And we completely deviated away from going man-to-man -man immediately from the get-go, and we took more of this zonal approach. So immediately, you can see City, in their first phase, they've got, what, five players excluding Ortega versus Arsenal's four. Or six v four. You could argue. You could even argue six v three. You really? Could, yeah, like, exactly. You can, yeah, you can make yeah. that argument. One hundred percent. You can look at it in many different ways, but the reality is that the, the, the key takeaway is that City had an overload and build up, and Arsenal were happy for them to have that overload and build up. That's the key. So, Arsenal, as you allude to, Arsenal adapted to Rodri's positioning. Now, Rodri, when he's in the midfield line alongside Matteo Kovacic, just keep it on this one for now. For oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Just keep it on that. The key was for him to not receive the ball, turn and face play. We can't allow that. We can allow a wall pass because City can't escape in that situation. We're happy for Ortega to play the, wall, to play the ball into Rodri and then Rodri plays it to John Stones. Providing Kai Havertz is able to maintain the running intensity and not jump too early onto Ortega. Because if you look at Havertz, 
He's trying to curve this run to force City to play towards the left-hand side. The reason why is because Akanji being right-footed on the, le uh, the left-hand side, the angles are going to be more unfavourable for him. And Ruben Diaz is not as good as a ball-playing centre-back as John Stones. So you're yeah. looking at individual weaknesses and, and, and we're trying to push them towards that side. But Ortega can play the, 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 warp, the, the pass into Rodri at times. And then he'll play it to Stones. And then Havertz had to jump really quickly on Stones to stop him from progressing. So or Ortega can go long, which is what yeah, we want. Yeah, or, or we can go long. And that's where we actually, and I'll speak about it and later. The, but and then we have the six feet three, wherever it is. Exactly. That's it. That's it. That's the synergy. There, there it is. There the, it is. So Superiority. That's it. So, so, so at the back, across our last line, we had the overload. In City's build-up, they had the overload. Yeah. We prioritised maximising that advantage at the back as opposed to at the front. It just meant that there was more running intensity required from someone like Havertz, who actually off the ball was so good in this game. So that's when Rodri's in this position. So let's move yeah. forward to the next next slide, please. Yes. And this is, yeah, this is a situation. Sorry, you, you go, you go. No, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so Ortega plays the ball into Rodri and then Rodri plays the ball into Stones. And Stones is, is going to try and carry the ball forward. But that's where Havertz is switched on. He's alert and he stops him from progressing down the field. And you can see Martinelli can't jump on Stones because he's pinned by Carl Walker. But the key trigger in Arsenal's press, regardless of who they play, whether it's zonal or man-to-man, -man, from, from the start, is that when they force a team towards the flank, that's when they go man-to-man -man across those spaces. They, con they condense the space, they squeeze, so they make it difficult for you to progress up the field. So then you can go to the next slide. And you can see here, it's very much man-to-man -man across the flanks. Julian Alvarez has dropped deep to show for the ball, and Gabriel immediately pressures him. Now, Gabriel actually fouls him in this, in this build-up. But the key takeaway is that Arsenal have prevented City from progressing up the pitch through their build-up. They have stifled them on that front. But also what's worth noting is the zonal responsibility of Partey, Gabriel and Saliba. Saliba isn't um, on, on the screen and also Haaland's not there. But we wanted to make sure that we had a numerical overload on Erling Haaland. So Gabriel and Saliba normally would be the two who would be tasked with keeping him at bay. But because Gabriel is jumping on Alvarez, that's the trigger for Thomas Partey to drop and to support Saliba. So that's just a, just one of the sequences that we saw. Yep. Okay. So that's when, yeah, essentially, just to sort of give us uh, a structure quickly. So Rodri, in that position, you see this, this sort of the man-to-man the man -to -man press that then adapts out into more of a, ma uh, sorry, a, a zonal press that sort of adapts out into a man-to-man -man press in the wide areas. And as you can see, Timber jumping forward, Partey in there. And it must be hard for, <laughs> hard for Guardiola, but you know what I mean? It must be difficult for Guardiola to decide because he might go, well, let me then commit less men to the to the uh to the first phase and you know maybe go long a bit more or try and break lines a bit, bit more whatever but then you're dealing with Saliba and Gabriel yeah. who and this is you know this is one of the I think I said on Twitter one of my key takeaways is that these ideas have always been there for Arteta he's always had these ideas and these and these and these sort of schemes it's having the capacity within the players to be able to do that even Havertz you know the and Havertz and Odegaard the energy to keep this up the whole oh, game yeah. Yeah, is, is another is another aspect, but this is another one when Rodri's in the back line, and then and then how yeah. differently we approach it. So, so 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 this this is where I I I refer to the point of Arsenal adapted relative to Rodri's positioning. And do you remember when Arteta actually said how he utilised forty five different formations in this game? Believe me, they did. Now I, this article could have been way longer. It could have been way longer. I tried to make no. it. <laughs> yeah, but um. So so when Rodri. So, so in order for Rodri's influence to, to increase, and as you allude to, Pep Guardiola is a generational coach. He's the best coach I've ever seen. They will find in-game solutions to counter what Arsenal are trying to do. And then it's like a pendulum. So Arsenal win one battle, so City try and bring that battle towards their end, and so on and so on and so on. You try and cancel each other out. And Rodri, in order for his influence to increase, he would step situationally at central centre-back, drop into the, into the back line to get on the ball and, and to try and face play. Arsenal were happy for him to do that because this was bait from Manchester City. Rodri dropping into the back line was encouraging Rice to come even higher, come higher. And then if I play a wall pass into, let's say, a John Stones, and then John Stones, with his ability on the ball, he could then find the space in the pocket in the middle of the park that has opened because Declan Rice has, has engaged really high. So the trigger was for Rice to actually sit off and to ensure that the distance between him and Thomas Partey isn't large enough that leaves Partey on an island. And the key for this is because when we were happy for Rodri to have the ball in these situations, right? So what we decided to do is for Rice and Party to stay within close proximity. And if you go lower, um, if you keep scrolling down, um, and yeah, scroll again, um, you can see Thanks there, on. yeah. And then this is the best one, I think. So 
that one, and then this one. This is the best one, where you can see Rice and Party are so close together to prevent Rodri from playing balls between the lines. So we were happy for him to effectively be in the back line, step up, in, and then we retreat into our mid block. But then when Manchester City effectively progress towards the middle of the pitch, that's when our mid block has two key intentions. Yeah. The first was, like I've alluded to, don't allow Rodri to fire balls between the lines. And notice Arsenal's structure there as well in their mid-block. They've got that box of Saliba, Gabriel, Partey um, and uh, Declan Rice versus Alvarez and Haaland. So we've got a numerical overload there. And also we're going to ensure that they cannot find any spaces between those lines as well. And they're going to be aggressive. Now, granted, someone could say, well, if Kevin De Bruyne was playing and Rodri was able to find the ball in those pockets, it's a different game potentially. And sure, but the principles remain. You know, the principles remain... If my grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the other intention of our mid-block, so when we were happy for City, so Rodri steps into the back line, they move forward, they move forward, Arsenal retreat, Arsenal retreat, up until we get to the middle third of the pitch, and that's where Erdogan and Havertz, they're orientating their body to force City to try and play towards the left-hand side because of the weak link in Akanji. Akanji being right-footed, playing left-back, is a trigger for Arsenal to increase the intensity of the press. But also, moving to the flank, that's a, that's a classic trigger for us to increase the intensity because players along the touchline, the angles in which they can move, are more restricted relative to the middle of the pitch. You know, think of 360 degrees in the middle of the pitch relative to 180 degrees on touchline. So, yeah, that's... Well, well, well. I don't want to overload people with too much information, but I think yeah. that, that key teaching key teaching you know what i mean key bit of analysis is is, re is really important the positioning of rodri how that then relates to how arsenal press only press man to man in the wide areas and then once rodri drops back in what then changes and there will be loads of other things i think someone mentioned in the comments you know, it was like 45 formations or whatever it was and you know that artist mentioned later on in the article you talk about liverpool and the man to man press uh, where is it? And it was a lot more man to man in this situation, just because it was you know different. And the, the again, the triggers are different. Havertz is pressing at a different height, and you know there's, there's all sorts of you were playing. You know we're yeah. playing slightly further up the pitch. There's all sorts of slightly different adaptations. But I think this is this is the key thing, and the sort of the thing I want to take away from it. It's the adaptation, the yeah. ability that we can go right, guys. When when this happens, I want you to step here. When this happens, we want you to go here. And there will be loads of things that we we can we can see you know, positionally, but there will be when he receives it on his back foot, I want you to step in there. You know, exactly, all, all, the, yeah. all the stuff that we don't, we just, we, we couldn't know. Um, which is, you know, it's preparation. And I think this is one of the things that, you know, I've, I've given this analogy before about like the 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 craft beer company, and I promise those of you who've heard it before, uh, I won't do it again. But essentially the idea that, um, uh, yeah, like the adaptation that Arsenal can do. Last season, we had one very clear idea that really worked in certain situations. And now what we found is a number of different adaptations. And that is down to, and I think would have been even, especially in our first phase, we would have seen even more adaptation with Timber, but Rice and Havertz, you know, we're looking at, we're looking at those positions until we had oh, those pitches, sorry, until we had Rice and Havertz, that is a very, very different um, scenario. You know, we're, we're, we're pressing in different ways We're the adaptation, yeah. you know, is, is, is another midfielder as comfortable stepping on to Rodri in the first line and stepping back and defending a mid block. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, you know, it's, it, it, that's, that's the key. You know, when you alluded to, you know, we, I remember when we did the rewatch for the Manchester United game and that was a completely different way in which we yeah. approached it off the ball yeah. compared to last season, last season, man to man, don't get me wrong. It is so effective. I love it because it's so high energy. And you know, when you're at the ground as well, when you see that level of intensity, it really gets you on board. But it's not always the smartest way, especially when you're playing against a team like Manchester City. Whereas Liverpool, as I allude to there, um, we went man-to-man -man against Liverpool because we didn't show the same level of respect as they did to Manchester City because we saw more weaknesses in build-up. We recognise Manchester City are so good in build-up. So why would we not show respect to them in that aspect? Whereas a Liverpool... We, 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 we were a lot more aggressive. And Brighton's another one, actually. When we played Brighton at the Emirates, mm. it was very similar to the Manchester City press as well. We respect certain teams in their first phase, but then other teams were happy to go a little bit more, yep. a bit more intense than the front yeah. And that intelligence to do that, you know, is credit, obviously, to the coach and the ideas, but also on the pitch with Erdegaard and, and players like him to understand those triggers and go, OK, yeah, you know, we or we can sit back here. Or I think there's something Arteta said before one of the games might be Porto where he talks about the emotional intelligence within a game 
mm-hmm. to go, okay, we're in this situation. Let's say with Porto, they split their centre backs. Yeah. The, you know, and you know, I'm sure Arteta would be on top of that and say, right, here's what I want you to be doing. But actually, there is a there is an emotional intelligence. Someone's commenting Saka's out for the season. I don't think he is. <laughs> Can I say I don't think he is? Let, let's calm down. Um, but it's the emotional intelligence to go. Actually, right now we want to step onto them really, really high and put put and push forward because that's what the yeah. game demands right now. Yeah. But yeah. in five minutes' time, you know, it's a different. There's, there might be a different energy. They might be playing a different way. They might be going further along. You know, we're thinking about half time. We've got a rest or whatever. We're now worried about you know. Okay, well, are we going to have to play 120 minutes? All those factors that are in the game when you're thinking about them and going, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be. Do you know what? It doesn't, it doesn't need to be rocket science, and we can adapt within the game. But the the intelligence to know when to do that without always the coach going, do this, do this, do this, do this. Yeah, do you, do you know what it is, Alex, as well? And, I, and and just looking ahead to that game against um, City on Sunday, it's going to be so boring. If you look at it from a neutral perspective, the Community Shield game, if you're not if you're not interested in the analysis, and that's fine. It was boring for the neutral. You ask any person who watched that Community Shield game, they say it was boring. The mm-hmm. game at the Emirates, it was boring. Sunday, it will be boring as well. And the, the, what, what really gets me on edge in these games is that it is defined in the boxes. It's just a couple of moments that that's yeah. what it takes to take. You know, you look at Martinelli's deflected goal. I say, I would say the game at the Emirates, that was a draw. I think a fair result was a draw, but we nicked it through the fine margins, just like Manchester City did last season with their 3-1 win. I'm adamant. And the 2-1 they, one at home at the Emirates. Emirates. They nicked it through fine margins. Yep. So law of averages, if you keep playing that same way and you're able to neutralise the opposition tactically, it's going to go in your favour eventually. Yep. You'd have to be the unluckiest team of all yep. time to not get yep. any, any sort of joy whatsoever. But I think Rohan, we need to stop talking about pressing structures. Four four two, big yes. man. Keep it simple. In Thank other you, words, Andrew. in other words, we should stop being dweebs. Rohan is pep light, apparently. Uh, Alejandro, <laughs> thank you so much for your uh, you. contribution. Really appreciate it, mate. Saka out of England. Rice following suit. Tommy new contract. You haven't spoken about the Tommy Asu new contract. I um, I missed it. What do you mean? <laughs> As in, I just I didn't see it till this morning. All right. it, it came out yesterday. I had no, I literally had no idea. What? I don't know how I missed it. I've literally, yeah, I, I don't know how you missed it. it was completely everywhere. missed yeah. it. But it's you know, <laughs> um, let me ask a let me ask a, a, a TNT sport question. So, Mikel, do you think that someone good signing a new contract at the club is a good thing for the club? <laughs> and when you're playing against um, Pep Guardiola this weekend, would you like to win the game? <laughs> You need to answer. Your pep like. Okay, right. Let's, can we start it again? Can we start it again? Because I was I was reading the comments. Uh, want a Rohan my mum to marry? <laughs> <laughs> I don't quite know what that means. Want a want a <laughs> Rohan my mum to marry? So I'm. He wants me to marry his mom. Maybe. Can you imagine? Ladies and gents, bringing Rohan home to your mum. Like if you were, I oh, want to give my mum to Rohan to marry. As in, he or he or she will give, will give his mu- his or her mum yeah. to yeah. you to marry. <laughs> I'm not sure you own her, <laughs> so she doesn't have any say in this. She doesn't have any say in this, <laughs> but of course she'd marry you. Look at you for goodness' sake. Um, right, let's move on. Yes. To uh, what well, we could do a bit of sort of managerial England chat. I know you don't love that. Yeah, we no, talk... we can. No, let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Basically, I wanna, I do want to discuss the south, the Southgate thing. <laughs> I do want to discuss the Southgate thing a little bit, right? Because we were talking about it last week, and, and we have covered it quite extensively on last week's podcast. So I don't want to go back into it in terms of you know the details of it, but just a sort of reflection on it. Yes. There's been more information coming out. Yeah, yeah. We know for a fact now that there is... It's like, okay, here's what Southgate w- wants us to believe happened. He said... That, no, I, w- I, w- I won't do that angle. The Athletic and the Telegraph have both come out and given extreme detail in terms of what actually happened. They've said literally like, right, you know, this it happened on this day. It happened in a team meeting. One of them was like, Kyle Walker spoke and said this. And then Ben White... like. That must have come from an inside source. It's too detailed not to. And they both said, you know, they, they were clearly given exclusive information. 
on the athletic article a couple of days later they also said something like uh 17th of march this has been updated based on new information that has been passed on to the to the authors so clearly there's some there's some new information uh and and insider information mm-hmm. and the the angle i want to take on it is this a lot of this is focused on ben white and ben white being a bit of a weirdo and like ben white not you know not liking football and that sort of stuff doesn't this reveal and 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 make and sort of fit in the pattern of everyone's problem with Southgate. Southgate is too loyal to people who are underperforming. That is his issue, right? His to Jordan issue. Henderson, to Harry Maguire, to sometimes Jordan Pickford. To you know, and we go back and we look at it, and you think of some of the 11s and th- that he used to put out. There's there's a lot of players over the years that you've gone. You know, Kieran Trippy, I think at times as well. Yeah. Those are probably the two the two obvious examples. Is this not just another example of Southgate being too loyal to a point where he's had to lie to protect someone? And I get like, I get it. Like, I understand that you're trying to protect your staff, but you don't need to lie. Like, it's it's I think last week it was like, oh, it sounds like he's lying. Now we know he's lying. Like, it, it's objectively a lie. Like, it, it, it must it be. Is. It is so, a- so. So for me, it's now let's let's move the conversation away from from Ben White being a bit of a weirdo, whatever, whatever the, the, the sort of, you know, all the think pieces on Ben White. Why can't we look at Southgate and go, this is just consistent with exactly who he is? Yeah. And why, why can't we look at the fact that, you know, he is not a, a manager. One of the, the most underrated aspects, and I think Nicola Arteta does this so well the psychological aspect to it and how you're able to deal with different personalities and different individuals. Quite clearly, right, from that article that we've read, they don't know how to deal with Ben White and they don't know how to deal with his personality. And 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 going back to it, one of the things that I read in the article was the fact that, you know, they were they were questioning, they were trying, I think, they what was it? They were, they were talking about, you know, how Manchester City play or something in mm-hmm. front of everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he asked the same question to Ben White. He also, yeah, he asked, and he didn't know. And then he... he that there was he had a little bit of a go at him. He had a little yeah. bit of a go at Ben White. Now imagine, right, at work, right, you you're you're in a meeting room in front of 20 people, right? And they're asking you questions and then you're not able to answer one of them and he singles you singles you out. What are you yeah. gonna do then? Yeah. Are you and, and even worse, even yeah. worse, at work, there is at least a bit of a like you might have a boss, right? You might have, that might be your boss who does that. The, I think like the, the, the dynamic is different. The players have the power. Whether you like it or not, the players are going to go out there and do the business. Yeah. The players are going to go out there and, 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 and put out your plan. The players are going to go out there and play for you. If you don't have them on site, it's not like at work where you could just replace them with someone else. You can't just replace Bakayo yeah. Saka. You can't just replace Tech Lorraine. The players are way more important than in an average workspace. So it's even worse than an average workspace. It is because, even worse, yeah. Because because your job is to keep these guys on side, whether you like them or not, you don't have to be best friends with them. And I also, I also want to say, and sorry, I, cause I cut you off as well, but no, I, I also, want, also want to say, this is a bit of a weird tangent I want to go on, but stick with me. So Ben White and I were born in the exact same hospital. We were born, we were both born in pool hospital. And I want to show you how close Ben White and I grew up. So uh, hang on, just put in pool hospital. So, can you see this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. So we he we were both born in the same hospital. He was born three months three months um, after me. He grew up here. Oh, sorry, I grew up here. He grew up here, like within twenty minutes of one another. Yeah. I don't know him. I don't. I don't know anyone. Anyone did know? I think he would have been a year below me. He reminds me so much, and that, just to give you an idea of how close that is, no, like it's very close. Actually. Literally, like yeah, a cut, like like down the road, right? He reminds me so much of people I knew when I was growing up. When you know when he answers that question about, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dox myself. If you can find my childhood home from this, <laughs> honestly, honestly, fair play to you. I, I deserve to be doxed at that point. If you can find where I live from that, honestly, fair play to you. Um, but yeah, and, and to be clear, I'm not, I'm not suggesting I, I have a, some sort of authority because I grew up near him. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is he reminds me of people that I knew when I grew up. And there is a kind of, and you notice it in me probably, there is a, a people from my hometown. And you, uh, and I'll, wait, I'll, I'll say this bit first and then I'll, I'll come back to it. People from my hometown 
there is a kind of like sarcasm that is very like there's like a jokey sort of atmosphere and there's a lot of very sort of like when he says um when the player when the reporter's like why do they call you benjamin he goes it's my name yeah. it's so like everyone i knew growing up and when yeah. I, and, yeah. and once i realized where he grew up i went oh it makes so much sense of a lot of his behavior and that might sound all sort of a bit wishy-washy just imagine yourself like in a in a different place meeting someone from your home and you're like your 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 hometown and they know the same references as you they have like they have sort of familiar yeah. mannerisms yeah. just things that he does and says that i'm just i can't quite explain it but he just he's so like kids at my school yeah, like he's yeah. just exactly so, like it so you can get it you understand And once it. i realized that i was like yeah. oh because it's not it's not standoffish no. again the, and that's the thing people who know him don't say oh he's standoffish the 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 acerbicness and the kind of caustic nature of, of how he is sometimes sort of going that's my name or yeah we're quite good at, or sort of the very deadpan yeah we're quite good at football is exactly like the kids at my school who yeah. who talk back to the teachers that's like my mate who i live with um finn who's from bournemouth as well there is just this i, I can't describe it it's like you know if, if you i don't know exactly where you, you loughborough is it like there must be like Joe Weller. It sounds bizarre, but like Joe Weller's like pretty good was such a big thing in Bournemouth. Like yeah. I can't describe like around my era, and yeah. it's just those little things that if someone went pretty good, I know they're from Bournemouth. Yeah, yeah. And I just know it. I it's, just know it. Anyway. It, it. It's just it's just your environment and and the behaviours that change depending on what environment you're in. And yeah. it's like when if you're if you're someone who is not from that area or is not familiar with that kind of sarcasm, you're immediately thinking it's quite arrogant. It's yeah. quite you know it's 100%. quite blunt. It, but um. But this is, the, this is the thing, you know, I, I, I don't like how his reputation across the media is, is being tarnished as each day passes here with these reports that are coming out. And I, 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 I'm, I you know, when I was alluding to the work uh, reference, I was talking about how you would react if someone questioned you in that environment. And if someone yeah. at work, you're around 20 other people and you get singled out, I, I don't know about you, I'd react in, in, in a pretty damning way as well because mm -hmm. you don't you know you shouldn't be treated like that by anyone and um that's what's happened uh, from what the article is saying is that you know steve holland had a go and ben ben white reacted and then it kind of escalated after that but connor cody also came out and he defended ben white um i don't know if you've oh, seen, seen that, that. yeah seen yeah connor cody's came out and and he's he's he's, he's kind of he's not just he's not like um pro ben white and completely against steve holland but he's he's given an understanding of what ben white is like and at the end of the day right Southgate is a mug. Southgate is a proper melt because he is wasting this generation of talent. He's wasting it. Trent Alexander-Arnold, right, regardless of what you think of him off the ball out of position, that guy is a generational talent on the ball, hands mm -hmm. down. He doesn't even use yep. him. Yep. You know, he, he, and, and he doesn't use players in the best possible way. Like you said, he has loyalties to certain personnel who he thinks he can rely upon, but have let him down in big moments. Harry Maguire was at fault for the Giroud goal in, in, um, in the World Cup. Bukayo Saka was England's best player, gets subbed off. He makes... He put, he put, he put Bukayo Saka in that position when he was 19. Yes. That's the guy we're talking about. I just... That's yeah. just... He... Raheem Sterling and Jack Grealish, and I don't know what I actually don't blame them individually because I remember Grealish came out after and said I wanted to take it to take a penalty. Yeah. Southgate put Saka in that position as the last penalty taker. He is. That is, he is. mental. Do you know this is why? Yeah, it, it really I, I, I like inject it into me when I see Southgate ball suffer because I hate the guy. I absolutely can't. not hate him as a human, but I hate him in football in terms. He doesn't utilize the best qualities, the, 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 the tools that he has available to him. And yeah. the, one thing that I will say about international managers that I, that I have a little bit of sympathy for them is that they don't, they're not able to work with players week in, week out. They get a, they get a few weeks um, over the course of a year, you know, two, two weeks max um, during three different time points over a season, right? So they don't get the opportunity to coach at the same level as a Mikel Arteta does, who has these players week in, uh, day in, day out, right? So then I'm thinking to myself, okay, what can you do to mitigate that? How about pick the best partnerships that are play operating at football right now? Mm. Name me a partnership that is better than Bukayo Saka and Ben White over the last two years for England. It's mental. It's, it's mental. honestly and, and crazy when you think about it. It's, and Sha it's, makes a good point here, and I'll, this is yeah. I kind of want where I want to lead this and move forward to the, the, the managerial merry-go-round. 
the ma- the main job of a manager is to maximize their resources. That is exactly it. It's your job as a manager is to build a tactical system that puts your best players in their best positions, doing their best qualities m- as much as possible. Pep said it himself. My yeah. job is he he said about Jeremy Doku. What's he said to the interviewer? What is Jeremy Doku's best quality? She said dribbling. He said right. So my job is to design a system where he's in he's in loads of situations per game where he gets to dribble. My job isn't to put him in situations where he's defending 1v1. I'm an idiot. That, why would I do that? So that's my tactical idea. And then as a man manager, my job is to make sure that these people feel supported. Okay, whatever. Someone's a bit sarcastic. My job is not to get my ego involved and go, oh, I feel a bit upset. Okay, like why, why, let me find out more about you. My job as a manager is to go, why, why is he like that? And the more you realize that, like, oh, it's just a bit of a cultural thing or, OK, well, he's actually quite a nice guy. Like, it's OK. My job is not to, in the middle of a, a World Cup, allow my assistant manager to banter him off in the middle of a session. Then what are we, 18 months later, try and defend him and lie about it? How is that good management? Horrific. It's, it, it, he's he's honestly such a moron. He is so he, it makes me so angry just 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 thinking about him because he is a melt. He Southgate would do fish and melt. fish and hummus. He'd do bangers and. Uh, Alex, another point right here. You know you, the, the the point that you made about. Well, <laughs> no bangers and mash. Oh, it was okay. A terrible um, bit. It was a terrible um, bit. Um, <laughs> no, no, carrots, no, 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 hummus and carrots. <laughs> Almost in carrots. No, no, no. The point was Southgate would would break it up because he's, you know, that's the. Oh right, I didn't get that. See, I'm not that clever though. I'm not, no, 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 no. It's it was a stupid. Bit. But going it back to your point, <laughs> going back to your point, right? A manager's duty, right? And I think you know, there's, 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 um, you like for example, Carl Ancelotti. I've got so much time for Carl Ancelotti because he has effectively gone against the grain over the years, where he has maximised the qualities of the players that he has available. He doesn't care about positional play in that manner, that strict to uh, a Pep Guardiola. He's more into that relationism type of bra- type of breed, like Arsene Wenger. And look at the amount of trophies that he wins year in year out. Look at the look at the honours, and and that's through maximising the resources. players that he has available. And, and Southgate doesn't doing do it. It's hmm? just maximising. Yeah, it's just maximising what you have in the best way you possibly can. Yeah, I completely agree. Want to want to do two more topics? I want to talk about the potential managerial changes in the summer, and I also want to yeah. talk about um, Bayern as well as that. And that draw quickly, and then we'll come to some questions at the end. Um, yeah, so Southgate potentially going to United. <laughs> it's funny. It's very funny. Uh, is this a hot take? Is that not like the Eddie Howe appointment for Newcastle? Like, it's not the dream because it's it's not the Pep. It's not the Guardiola. That's the same person. It's not the Jurgen Klopp. It's, you know, it's not the sort of the elite coach, you know, Ancelotti, whoever you want to call it. But is that not a bit of a smart appointment in that he will just do everything? Like, this is the, he's loyal to a fault. He sounds like a bit of a yes man. Will he not just do what every everything that these very powerful guys that are coming at the top of the club now Dan Ashworth, Omar Barada, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, they don't want a pep right now. And I, I actually don't think they would like one. Do you see what I mean? I, I don't think it would be useful. Is it not better to have a bit more of a sort of statesman, director of football type manager, surround him with lots of good football ideas and allow him to rebuild the club that way as a kind of figure before moving him on in, say, two, three years? Is that a hot take? I, 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 so, so going back to the Eddie Howe point, so Eddie Howe, the manager that he was at Bournemouth to the manager that he is at Newcastle, is quite chalk and cheese because Eddie Howe, when that Bournemouth team that we saw, you know, in terms of in possession, attacking play, it was really exciting, but the, they were so leaky, so leaky. And granted, the back line that he had, I think they didn't change their back line for like three, four seasons. But Eddie Howe actually went away from management, mm. changed, and came back in. And he's yep. a different type of coach now. So Gareth yep. Southgate, the way I look at Gareth Southgate right now and his methods, I think that they are very outdated. And I don't think, like I said, he maximizes the players that he has at his disposal. Whereas an Eddie Howe, at a Bournemouth, obviously, the, the difference between Eddie Howe and, and, and Gareth Southgate in that moment is that a Bournemouth, you are not getting the same level of media coverage that you would at an England, which means that you are analysed a lot more deeper at an England. So any mistake that you make is 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 
is taken a lot it's, it's, a, it's looked at a lot bigger relative to a Bournemouth. So Eddie Howe would have made a lot of mistakes at Bournemouth, but it wouldn't have been to the same level of a Gareth Southgate because of the media coverage. But Gareth Southgate hasn't showed me anything to suggest that he is changing as a coach. No, so, and, I, and I don't think he is, but I want to come to this to answer that. Alex, the question is, do you think Southgate is competent, competent enough to rebuild it, even with all the ideas he's surrounded with? I don't think, I don't think Southgate is a competent tactician. I don't think he has good enough football ideas. That, that, that we that we can see, right? But what I think, what's his best quality, or and also his worst quality? It's loyalty and creating an environment. We can't deny that what Southgate has done at England is bring a group together and really work on the sort of the the more cooperative side of things. You know, people love going away to England now in a way they didn't used to. The players clearly, there's clearly a different environment. He's clearly more of a statesman type figure. I've always felt he is he's a director of football. That's what he is. He's good at creating environments. And he will stand there and take the blame. And that's kind of what United need. I think in a way. Accountability. They, accountability. Yeah. They need someone to be the face of the face of the next few years as they go through some pain and they and they stick behind him. And he's sort of in that sort of dignified. Oh, I once saw this thing that was like Southgate is the kind of guy who, who who's, it would be the kind of husband who would drive you to a colonoscopy appointment and sit outside <laughs> sit outside in dignified silence eating a scotch egg and i was like that is that is it he is just that classic englishman just sort of we do the right thing sort of thing and i wonder and look united long term need their pep guardiola they need their guy with the best football ideas in the country but short term do they not need while there's all this turmoil and pain going on someone to stand up as the and sort of keep the morale and keep the team together is what i'm saying i think what united need is a manager who is going to stay true to the principles that he believes in so eric ten hag right he came in and obviously we've answered them a lot eric ten hag is a good coach Right, he is a good coach. You can look at it through his Ajax days. The, the the job at Man United is too big for him. The biggest issue that Eric Ten Hag has had, and something that Mikel Arteta didn't do, was that Eric Ten Hag wasn't ruthless in terms of his principles. So he's recruited players to try and play his way, but then he has also recognised the fact that Manchester United, the heritage of Manchester United, was a, was based on a lot of transition, in my opinion, transition football as well. Granted, they dominated games as well, but there was that 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 level of a f- um, threat that they had on the break. Eric Ten Hag, I think, has become too pragmatic because of what Manchester United are as a football club. And I think they need someone who is effectively going to be like a Mikel Arteta, like a De Zerbi. I think De Zerbi would be perfect for Manchester United because I know for a fact that he is... A, I think what will happen... No, I, I, hit, hit me out here, Alex. I don't think Manchester United fans will be on board with it because they'll get smashed 4-5-0s or five nils, um, quite frequently as well during the early stages. But that is the type of manager that they need. They need a manager who is going to be stubborn and that is going to stay true to the principles that they believe in. And with the, um, who are they bringing in um, for recruitment? I forgot what his name was. Um, Dan Ashworth. Dan Ashworth, yeah. Dan Ashworth, yeah. Dan Ashworth, that's a really good step for Manchester United. That's a really good starting point. Now, couple that with a manager who is going to be stubborn as well. And you have something that can work really well. I think bringing Gareth Southgate, granted, He'll take accountability and granted, um, I think that it could, that there could be fans by his side, but there's not longevity to it. And then you're recruiting players to a Gareth Southgate style of football, and then you go for someone like a Pep mold. You'll then need to overturn the squad again because it's. But, a I, but I, I don't think I don't think there is a Southgate style of football. <laughs> I think United will like gut the squad, sell a lot of the big players regrow under a young team with that sort of that statesman like manager and then when they feel the time is right they will go for because again it's go out and get a pep there isn't a pep no, no there's, not. <laughs> there's, there's only not. one yeah. Yeah. so you have to find the next big thing in management and they might think that's not out there right now it's not right yeah. for, for, for united right now i'm just saying what they might think i'm not saying this is right yeah, i'm yeah. saying i'm saying they might be thinking what's ahead of us a massive restructuring of the club a massive renewal of the sporting project. Um, we want to get the wage bill down. We want to get the divas out of the squad. We want to bring a, a group together. We want to we want to unionize a fan base and a club. We want to rebuild the stadium. We want to do all the sort of the that sort of stuff. Do we want someone who is going to stick to their principles and be very ruthless in terms of their football principles and go? This is how I want to play. 
Or do, for a couple of years while we're doing that, do we want someone who can like probably get us sixth, fifth, do all right, and then and then when we feel the time is right, we get rid of him and we go for someone who can come in and, and change the project. I don't know. I don't know. But then wouldn't you say after finishing fifth or sixth under a Gareth Southgate, they're they're going to go through more teething issues with the next manager who is going to be that I th- guy? I think. I mean, Jim Ratcliffe even said, yeah. I think he might look at that. Uh, the, the Arteta project and think we might have to finish eighth a couple of times. I think yeah. he'll be a lot more communicative. I think he might say, look, you know, fans, we've got a long-term project project here. We're going to finish lower than we want to for a couple of years. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> I think I he'll think, be more communicative about I, it. I, I think as, like there's a lot of Arsenal fans who are not on board with the Arteta project during the start of it in terms yeah. of the finishes. And, and, and that's fine. For me personally, as a fan, I would rather... Just go for the guy that you want if he's available. There's no, I hate this. Uh, we need our pep, etc. You need to find the manager who you believe in, who has a style of football in place that gives you longevity and consistency and sustainability. And then you recruit to that ideology. And then let's say that manager, it doesn't work out. Then you bring in another manager who has stylistically similar sorts of ideas to him. So then the turnover of the squad is not as much. But I, I, I agree. But the, but the yeah. problem is, Someone who can, someone who can occupy, and I will use the, the, these names: Pep, Klopp, and Arteta. Someone who can occupy that space in a club where they are the manager, the 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 for, they foremost football thinker in yeah. in that room, the lead cultural leader, the one who can unite the fans, the one who has the best football ideas in the room, and arguably some of the best in the world. You don't find that every day. That no, doesn't just no, so 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 I think like someone who can come in and stick to the principles and get that recruitment right and a you know, an upwards manage well and align you know all, all those things. We struck absolute gold with Arteta. Oh, hundred percent, absolute 100%, gold. Yeah. So yeah. I so I I, he, I I think Jim Ratcliffe must be looking at it, going, do can we find? Is there a manager on the market with these qualities, the charisma to unite a fan base? And players, and and by the way, the the, the people that the staff in the room at, at Colney and, and so on, the best football ideas, some of the best football ideas in the world with, with time, the ability to recruit to an idea and an ide- ideology that we see going on for the next five, ten years. So there's not going to be this massive change, and there's going to be Van Gaal players and Moyes players and these players and that players still in the squad, that the Mourinho players or whatever. Uh, someone who is going to stay at the club. If uh, under adversity, someone who we can, who Manchester United fans are going to get behind, all these things. Are you going to? Fi- who, by the way, Pep and Klopp and Arteta f- fulfill at their clubs. Are you going to find that on the market this summer? I think, I think that's extremely hard. I just feel they might be going. Yes, that's our long term goal. What you're saying, find that guy who can br- bring those football ideas, recruit to that ideology, and stick to that plan for a, for a consistent period of time. I just think they might be going. Look at that wage bill. Look how disconnected the fan base is. Look how, um, you know, uh, look at the, how the recruitment's been. We need a gutting. We need to get rid of Fernandez. We need to get rid of Rashford. We need to get rid of, you know, whoever the players are leaking, you know, the stuff in the dressing room. We need to rebuild the stadium. And in that period, we are okay to bankroll coming fifth or sixth with a culture manager, Southgate is perfect, who's also worked with Dan Ashworth. Before we go, Right then, here is our guy who hits all of those parameters. But you know the point that you make about you know uniting the fan base. Do you think Gareth Southgate would do that at Manchester United for the for the first couple of seasons? I don't think many United fans would, would buy into Gareth Southgate. I don't think so. No, that, that's but... I, I I hear you. I, I completely hear what you're saying. I think it's kind of that steady the ship first couple of seasons, right? But someone better than Gareth Southgate could steady that ship, surely. I I, I would probably agree with you there. Yeah. I'd probably agree with you there. But I, I just think the name Southgate has come up out of a necessity and also out of the fact that Dan Ashworth has worked with Southgate before. And I think there might be a sort of a, a bit of a respect. Within within football, Southgate, I, I know we slag him off. Within football, Southgate is respected. Oh, he is. It's, he is. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So it's, yeah, it's... it's, but, it's but, do you know what it is? I, I hate it when people try and use Arteta as the way of, oh, we need to get our Arteta. That's not going to happen. Yeah, but what yeah. you can still do is still recruit to a philosophy. You can do that. It might not give you the same impact as an Arteta, but I know what I would rather, and I would rather 
go towards a philosophy that represents the football club. Manchester United is a little bit more difficult. Because that was with Arsenal. We saw it under Wenger. One thing that we had with Arsene Wenger, regardless of what you thought of him, and I have so much respect for him, he's, honestly, I, I love Wenger. The style of football is what people associate Arsenal with, you know. And that's what I think made it easier for Arteta in that sense. Whereas Manchester United, it's it's a little bit more different. But for me, they need to recruit to a philosophy and they need to stick by it and they need to go through the teething issues. At the end of the day, regardless of what they do, try and unite the fan base or not, they're going to go through teething issues anyway. So why not mm. go through it at the start? And it, granted, you might not have that manager who's the long-term manager, but I'd rather recruit to that style as opposed to... Um, you know, going for someone who can steady his ship mm. just like that. So, yeah, I, I, it'll be interesting to see which which side they fall down on. Um, Nick Campbell says Ange is actually a good transition manager, and yeah, I think I think Ange yes. is, yeah. is, is 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 another good shout for that that sort of that job of has he got the best football ideas in the world? Has he got all the contacts to to pull that off? Has he got the pedigree? Has he got the charisma? Has he got, has he got everything? I don't know. But has he certainly got an ability to unite a fan fan base and 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 steady the ship? And get rid of the kind of those those players with egos and get the the team playing for each other again. I, I I think you might. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, we're coming to the end of the show. So let's do some questions. Let's do some questions. Um, we haven't yet discussed the Isaac rumors. We haven't yet discussed yet discussed the buy and tie. Oh my god! I was like, so get your, get your questions in. But while you do that, um, I do want to show you. Did you see? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know what. This did is. you see this? I was watching this last night and I could not believe what I saw. I think like we we hear that I've said this before about Bayern Munich. I'm pretty confident about it. I don't think we'll get through, by the way. I think we'll go out. But I'm pretty confident about the time. I think we'll have a really good um uh I think we'll have a really a good, good stab at it. Yeah. When you what when you think about that, you, you hear the 10 2 and you go, Oh my god, we're just gonna get smashed again. They're so good. L we had Mustafi and Jacker at centre back. Because she only got sent off. Mustafi and Xhaka. They were getting pulled around like... I'm not going to say. To sum this up right. Look yeah. at that. It's... That's That is, by the way, that is at 52 minutes when the score is 1-0 to us at home. Monreal is there. Mustafi is there. <laughs> There's three players in our box. And we're all like we're doing relationism as a as a defense tactic. It's unbelievable. <laughs> you wouldn't know which team is defending. In you this. wouldn't. Know, you would have no idea. <laughs> if I said to you, uh, uh, "This is Arsenal in a high press against a," um, uh, uh, or, or you know, we just we just we just had a counter attack against their goal, and it was a you know it was a six v four or something, and we just had a counter attack, and then the United player, the the Bayern player, wins the ball back and plays out here, and they go again. You'd be like, yeah, yeah that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Horrendous, Mate, honestly. But that's the thing. You, you you think back to those games, and you go, or those um, yeah, you think back to those score lines, and you go, oh my god, it's going to be like that again. It's it. We are a completely different team. Completely different gravy. Uh, question: Isaac Rumor, would he not be a great signing for us? I like Isaac. I like him as a player. I think he's a lot more technically gifted than people give him credit for because of his size. If you look at him, there was a goal he scored where he like play, played it along against the Everton. byline. Against Everton. Hey, you see it there. He has got... He's technically outrageous. He's, te he's outrageous technically. Yeah. I think he's got the ability... I, I, I like him wide as well. I've seen him in wide areas. I don't know how that translates, but I think, you know, I think he's got something there. Does he have the arrogance... Not I think it's sure. his physical capacity sometimes that I, I look at Isak. I've seen, so in, in certain games where Newcastle are backs against the wall, you need that outlet. And granted, Isak can spin in behind. He gives you that channel threat. But I think in terms of holding the ball up and allowing you to win for second balls, he's not the best there. He's not the mm. best at pinning centre-backs. But his qualities in terms of his ball striking, in terms of the 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 ability to drift through either side, both the yeah, right and I left. I think he can drift. You know, my point. He, he's, he's, he's very good at Isak in terms of outside the box, is so good. You know, before he signed for Newcastle, I actually think he's worked a lot on his movement inside the box. That was one of the weaknesses that I saw mm. of him when he was out, um, when he was playing in Spain. But I, I, I do think that there are... I'll tell you what, I do really like him. I do I do really like him, but um, yeah, he the, would the, be my, my preferred choice, for sure. No, I think he's a good option. It would be one of those, if we could 
if we get a superstar winger and then sign Isak for sixty million, I'd be like, that's a that's a great that's a great he's sign. Top player, he is a top player. Um, the uh, th- there was there was some concerns about his injury history, which I I, I do get, I do hear. But I'm much more concerned about how the how Newcastle handle injuries. Yeah. Like, if you look at Newcastle as a as a as a whole, the way they handle injuries, I think Sven Botman's again out. You know, and you, I appreciate you can't help people doing their ACL, but Sven Botman's had his injury issues. Fabian Shares has had his injury issues. Kieran Tripp. You could literally get Tino Livermento, Nick Pope, Bruno, uh, Anthony Gore. Like every single player has had oh, mad injuries. In- has had mad injury issues at, at Newcastle. At some point, you might have to start going, is that just individuals and luck? Or is that overplaying? Is that environment? Is that recovery? Is that... I'm sure they have the best information, but are, are the best decisions being made? That's the, is a different thing. And then I look at his injury record before he came, and he's been playing since 2016. And, you know, if you count that up, what's that? 30 games or something? You know, it's not before he comes to Newcastle. It's it's not it's not crazy. So I I I'd, I I'm concerned about the injury issues. I'm not saying I'm not, but I also think there are other factors that maybe once you take him out of Newcastle, I don't know. Yeah, I think um, it's not injury is always difficult, isn't it? To see if someone's injury prone. I mean, if someone is like out for years every 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 single time, then yeah. Yeah, you know you've got an issue. But I don't think I'm medically in a position to give. Um, I am. You are though. Yeah, I am. Uh, that's such a bad Louis Theroux. See. Ouch. Nick Campbell, if the Chelsea fire sale materialises, who do you want, Madrick? Oh, my God. They've got some players there. They've got so many good players. Here's, oh, here's what I was going to do. We'll finish on this. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and ironically, I would love to go through the 20, well, 19 other Premier League clubs and get a name that you would sign for Arsenal. Oh, okay. Yeah. And spe- specifically from non-big six clubs. But let's just do Chelsea because we can probably... Or get Maybe we could do names, multiple names, players that we like from other clubs. Um, I think I like De Sassi. I like Gusto. I like Conor Gallagher. I don't think we have, we have that profile. I like Mudrick. I like um, Carney. Carney Chukawema. That's, yeah. that's someone I really Who? like. I, Carney Chukawema. Chukawema. Can't he chuck him away? Can't he chuck him on the ground? <laughs> what, did you, what, did you, what did you just say? Can't he chuck him away? Can't he And there's also, um, the, I think he's injured. Um, Leslie Ugochukwu. Yeah. He, I remember George, George told me to keep an eye on him yeah. and I was watching him in the French league. And yeah, he's another one. I, I like yeah. this one. Um, I, 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 uh, Colwell. I think there's a lot of talent there. There's Colwell's a, talent. a very good shot. There's a lot I of also think Badia Shields a good player as well. I know Badia Shields a good player. Yeah, I, I, I mean, really en- like Enzo and Caicedo, yes, the, the price tags are there, but they are good players. Again, it's I always say this. Take a snapshot of a player's reputation. People just go, basically what happens is they go, oh, Chelsea's rubbish. Take a snapshot of what you thought of a player over their career at like certain points. Like Wayne Rooney, right? It's like, or no, let's, do, let's do Pogba. I think we've talked about this before, right? About to be the best player in the world, completely dusted, injury prone, great on his day, uh, world world class. Uh, it, like just depending on where you pick it in in sort of the, the timeline of a player's career, the the public perception of them is so different. So that tells yeah. me that environment is the most important thing. Environment is king. Yeah. Environment yeah. is king. So so for me, someone like Mudrick, the talent doesn't go away. The talent Listen, doesn't without, go away. Without Looking... the environment, you're not able to showcase your qualities. You know, um, so and Chelsea got a really. This is what I'm saying. Chelsea are massively underachieving. They've got a really good squad. They've got so many, so much talent. Yeah, they, they definitely do. Let's go through to finish off. Um, oh, actually, Nicholas Shea says, "What does Rohan want to do? It's his show." <laughs> what do you want to do, Alex? Don't forget about me. What do you want to do? Uh, Arian says, we'd love to see Rohan and George on the same panel video. That's no, too much of a nerd fest. Too much of a nerd fest. We can't Am I do that. that. nerdy? Yeah, I am a bit actually. I'm not. I'm not, though. I'll tell you what, you, in real life, I'm not, I'm not like this. I'm not no, like you're this. hench. Swole. Swole. Um, <laughs> just a gym rat. Let's go through the... I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments as well. Uh, on players you would like from each other Premier League club. Just to, just to point out, we are top of the league. 
Oh, okay. Let's do two players you'd like from Outside every other club. The, You're allowed. Oh. Uh, we'll do every club. We'll do every club. Two play. If you could sign two players from every club, and they have to be different from both me and yourself, who okay. would you sign? And then we'll also go to the audience to see see what they say. Okay. Let's start with Liverpool. Um, and let's try and not do the obvious picks. I I really love Curtis Jones. I think as a system player, his off the ball work, he's a little bit green at times. In the same way that Harvey Elliott is, and it might be a Klopp thing, where sometimes I'm like, just stand still. Like you don't need to run around all the time. Yeah. But I think he's, and I don't, I don't think he's the most technically gifted player in the Premier League. But his tenacity, his aggression, his running. I really like. Okay, he's not done very well since he's came. I like Graven Birch. I do okay. like the look of Graven Birch. Um, but we're going to go for every single one. Do you want me to explain my reason? Or... Uh, yeah, give, give us a quick one. I, I, I think I think he's got. Uh, I think in terms of the tools and that that power in the middle of the park, I don't think he's been able to showcase that at um, Liverpool yet. Whereas I think. When you watched him um, at previous clubs, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was Ajax I watched him from. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, obviously, yeah. Alisson and Salah, but you know, you know. But, but, um, is the, yeah, but Salah, I wouldn't pick him because how long is, what the, is the, does Salah yeah, have the, the money you'd be spending? Is that going to be worth? Yeah, exactly. Is that going to be worth? I like this shout. I love Gerald Kwanzaa. That is, cr- yeah, that good. is crazy. They just regened Virgil van Dijk. Do you know, and also um, Bradley as well. Connor Bradley, yeah. Great yeah, player. Connor Bradley's another. Uh, City? Hmm. I I love Rico Lewis. I think Rico Lewis is brilliant. Um, yeah. Let's, uh, yeah, let's try and do sort of realistic signings. Yeah, I don't want to go obviously for the Obviously, obviously De Bruyne or Haaland, but like, you know, we, I think there's a world in which we pay enough money to get Rico Lewis. Um, yeah. I like Rico Lewis. I like, do you know what? I like Ortega. Oh, that's a that's mad a great shout, shout! But yeah. I love Ortega. That's a great shout. If yeah. we could have an Ortega in our team, yeah, mate. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with I'd go with the Ortega shout. The Bob guy, <laughs> um, Oscar Wilde. Uh, Ake says Oliver Marshall. Don't mind that. I, yeah, don't mind. Nathan Ake, Kanji, and Ortega says Flip Doc. Uh, Aston Villa. Um, I like Bubakar Kamara, and I like Douglas Louise. Obviously, Ollie Watkins, but I think that's a lot of money. Um, yeah, Douglas Louise. I'd, I'd go with Douglas Louise. For sure. uh, I've got Tottenham, hands down. I know Luca, I Luca Dean, I've always rated, and he's looked really good this season. He is quite a traditional fullback, so I'm not sure he'd work in our system, but we don't necessarily have that. Mm-hmm. He's quite yeah. good 1v1. I quite like Luca Dean. I think, I think then you could go back to Liverpool and look at someone like a Simicast and, as well. Yeah, yeah, more of a traditional so, traditional yeah. uh, guy. Uh, Spurs. Oh, hands down, Papa Matisse. I love that shot. Oh my god. I love that shot. That is serious talent, serious yep. potential. I love that shot. I'd I'd agree with you there. And let's do one more. Um, but, uh, Van der Ven's another one, but like I said, I've got we've got Kivio and Gabriel there. So Van der Ven. Okay. Let me put it this way. If we're sat here in ten years and we go, Do you remember Van der Ven? He was brilliant. Shame about the injuries. I wouldn't be surprised. He's so explosive that I worry that it's just it's gonna explode his his, his hamstrings every single time. I comes that, yeah. He he yeah. can do it. He can do it. Yeah. But do you? My question is: when people say he's so fast, do you want him doing that five, ten times isn't a game? That, isn't do that a you? consequence of what Ange is tasking those players across the? Back yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I, I, yeah, I think that's more on the manager as a. I mean, yeah, no, but it's, it's no surprise that he's he's picked up what two injuries. In the yeah, the season, and maybe. they're both like basically exploded hamstrings. Yeah. Like again, maybe he'll he'll you know maybe the system changes or he can sit back a little bit more. But th- that kamikaze, he's a very good defender. But that kamikaze style of football, I do worry about his, his body. Nicholas Shea, he he says the best thing regarding Spurs, and I think we should move on. I agree, completely agree, I Nick. Agree. Uh, Manchester United. Let's not go minor. Let's let's go for someone different. Yeah, I would go. I I really like the look of Highland still. Yeah, he's still a bit raw, yeah. but once he once he sorts his positioning out, sometimes he's too 
he's too he's, he's he's either too high or too deep in the box. He, he feels like he never finds that sort of central space in the six yard box. It's just that that depth he provides you, that that running power, but also the yeah. ball striking off both feet is ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's really yeah. Cool. Love that. Uh can't lie, I think he's an absolute rat, but I think if Garnacho played for us, I'd love him. Not sure about that. I really I I think Garnacho, he has that sort of just that will to win. To, to almost a cre- apparently he had the, when he was playing the FA Cup final he had the FA Cup as his phone screen background which I just <laughs> think is like it's so Martinelli do you know what I mean and that will get you places um, yeah it could be mine it would be it would be a pick but uh, United Kudus and uh, I think Jared Bowen would be a, a great I for us as a, as a pick, pick out on both sides I think he's incredibly underrated Jared Bowen incredibly good player. underrated um, good player. yeah just keep going uh, West Ham, yeah, K- yeah, Kudus and and, and Bowen. I don't hate. Is it a Gerd? Their centre back. Oh God, they absolutely hate him. You know. I back. think he's. I think he's all right. Do you he's, know, he's. He reminds yeah. me. And I have a bit of a weird thing about this. Without Fass at Leicester, oh, I think put started. him in a back three. He'd cook. Moving Stick on. that man in the back three. I think he'd cook. I don't, he's I don't got know. an exceptional diagonal switch. To be fair. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, Brighton. Oh, do you know, I, I, not now, but I've always been a, lo- a lover of Lewis Donk. I think he's so underrated. He's so underappreciated. He's one of the most underrated players in this country. Um, yeah, Lewis Donk, country. Yeah. That was so middle. So middle. <laughs> <I say? laughs> country. Actually, no, actually, I've got my pick. I've got my pick. One of the most um, underrated players in the country. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my pick, actually. Um Go on. It's what I'd want in terms of that channel running left back, Estupinian. Sure. I was about to say, yeah, yeah per- Purvis, as I call him, Purvis. Uh, Pascal Gross is a shout. Pascal uh, Gross, another one. Yeah. Uh, right. Who, in terms of like... value for money, Alex, he Go has on. to be one of the signings of the last five, six years. Unbelievable. Easily. Unbelievable. Yeah. Some shouts. Jao Pedro's for... another good one. Jao Pedro. Jao Pedro. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Evan Ferguson's a good shout. Dunk, Ferguson, and Matoma. Uh, oh, this is for for, wo- for Wolves. Uh, Wolves. I like Cunha. I like well, Nathan Collins has gone to Brentford he's my pick for Brentford I always like Nathan Collins um, I like yeah I like Cunha I like Quang oh, he's a bit of an obvious pick I, I, I really like Eight Nuri as well yeah I see and, that um, and someone underrated as well I wouldn't take him but uh, Mario Lamina as well in the middle of the park I like yeah. him yeah well. did he play for Nice yes Nice but this... he was at um... sorry go on yeah Jack no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Jao Gomez. Uh... This Jao, I, I've never watched him. I've not, I've not kept a close eye on him as well. People so. keep saying the same, but I, ge- I genuinely couldn't tell you who he is in the Wolves team. It feels like they have about fifteen players called like a combination. Some, some Fernandez, Gomez, <laughs> Joao. It's, it's all the Portuguese guys. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Neto, the Korean guy. Um, oh, Newcastle! Forward. I've got my pick. Newcastle, give me Sven Botman, please. If his if his legs don't blow up, I think that is a proper player. Live Romento, please. Oh, I live Romento. Good shout. Good shout. Um Chelsea was spoken about. Fulham, give me Anthony Robinson. Give oh, me Tosin Adorabio. Yep. Um, I don't want Palinia. I've never understood this. Like he's all right. And when you have the best numbers at something, if he was going to come in. He's the sort of player that if we signed him, I'd go, Mikel's going to do something with him. He's going to play inverted fullback or he's going to, I think he's going to do something. I don't think he plays the same role he plays at Fulham at Arsenal. Yeah. That's a kind of. Yeah, I, I do that's... think, I do think out of possession in a confined structure, which is what Fulham, Fulham are very underrated in terms of their block. He's excellent, but on the ball, I do think that he's, um, he, he lacks in terms of that, that diagonal and, and, and the, the speed at which he's able to play the line break as well. Andy, um, Andy Robinson, he's the one. He, he He's so underrated. He's uh, the one. And I, through you know it, it, oh, <laughs> she offers me protection. I wasn't bad, to be fair. It's better than your impression at the start of the show, whatever that guy's name was. Um, <laughs> the Willian and the Anthony Robinson uh, dynamic is quite nice in terms of Willian always likes to cut inside and then Robinson takes that player away from him. It's quite a little... Moving forward, I think I, I, I got into my nerd boat. Then let's let's keep going. <laughs> this guy, this guy, just advocated for Willian on this channel. No, I... 
Can we just... This guy actually just said, William. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> it's, his, it's his podcast. I get it. But like, at what point do I have to step in and just... I think that was a, that was a moment where I, I deserved to be kicked, for sure. Uh, let's finish off. Bournemouth. Um, oh. I don't know. Tavernier looks all right. I don't really have... I don't watch Bournemouth enough, even though I'm literally yeah, from... I, I, I I'm, I'm a massive there. fan of Solanke, but I wouldn't want him at Arsenal. Um, yeah. I I would love to run. I'd love to run an experiment of like what team, like say you could you pick you know a, a thousand Premier League fans, what team would have the le- could people name the least amount of players from? It would be Bournemouth. <laughs> <laughs> name that starting eleven. Is it Neto? Is he? But he might have gone. Adam Smith. Z- Zabonyi, is that his name? I've yeah, no idea. Senny say Senny say Neto. Senesti, uh, yeah. Billing Billing. Okay, yeah, Billing. Um, you've got um, Solanke. What's his name? Uh, Cliver. You've got Cliver. Cliver. Um, who's the guy? Um, who's Semenyo. Semenyo. Yeah. I reckon I get an eleven, but mate, beyond that, oh, and, and Luton, and yeah. Luton. I I don't watch enough Bournemouth to be honest. Um, Palace. Give me Rob Holding. Uh, Palace. Give me. <laughs> Wait, I, I think I think. Yes, that that's deserved. That 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 is a red flag. All right, get yourself back in. <laughs> um, uh, no yeah, Eze, Eze, Eze. Elise. Um, I like the yeah, look yeah, of. Yeah. Um, I need to watch him a bit more. But that Wharton, who's came in. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. he's like what five or six games now since yeah, last came in. He looks all right. Um, Brentford. I love Nathan Collins, mate. I love Nathan Collins, and Aaron Hickey is my boy. Aaron, Aaron Hickey is, is yeah. an Arsenal player, mate. Both sides, both feet, six foot one. He's an Arsenal fullback. Is he that tall? Is yep, that tall? Six one. I do like the look of uh, Nico Henry as well. I-, I think he's another underrated one. Who? Um, Nico Henry. Rico Henry. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's out. At the end of the in. day, only the surname <laughs> matters. Do you know that the unsung hero, right, of Brentford? Ethan Pinnock, Ethan Pinnock, Pinnock's a, I've yeah, rise, mate. rise. I'm telling you, so underrated. He's in that dunk category as well. Yeah, proper, proper, good player. Yeah. Um, oh, Luton. Awesome. I like Alfie Doughty. Oh, yeah. I miss literally miss Brentford. Oh, li- missed um Everton. Sorry, Branthwaite. Oh yeah, Branthwaite and Anano. Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty obvious. Luton. I like Alfie Doughty. Um, I don't hate the look. What's that guy's name? The striker. Maybe. Adebayo? Yes, but there's another one. Morris? Maybe it is Adebayo. I don't watch them enough. But when I have when I have watched them, which is basically against us when they played City and when they played Liverpool. Mate, the Newcastle game. Colton that Morris. That's, Col- what, that's what I mean. That's why I say Colton I'm, Morris. Yeah. I wouldn't sign him. I'm not saying that, but I oh. wonder whether he gets a move. I, I, I tweeted, um, you know, when, when they played Manchester United, Colton Morris is that type of striker. You know, when, you, when it's like a big annoying. team against a small team, and he plays for a small team. I love watching that type of striker. It's yeah. like proper battering ram. And yeah, he's just, just like a proper old school. Like... Old school. Right. It gives me Troy Deeney vibes. You know when yeah. he was at Watford? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper yeah. Troy Deeney vibes. Love that. Yeah. Uh, relegation zone. Forrest. Give me Gibbs White. Give me Gibbs White. Uh, oh, I had one from Forrest. I wouldn't hate that signing as what, a what's genuine What's your thoughts on uh, Murillo? Um, he's he's been linked. I'm watching enough. I'm not watching enough. I I'm saw watching. that. I saw that name come out. And I don't. I don't know him enough. But Gibbs White, I love. Uh, a one year again. I, I wouldn't sign him, but I think. Oh, he's a one player. year. I, I love him. Um, uh, not for Arsenal, but again, another battering ram. Like, yeah. H- how many strikers have you seen uh, do what he did to Saliba um, yeah. for the goal Mate. Uh, at yeah. their ground? He's just re- relentless, and at some point that, that gets you something. Didn't you meet him on a train? Yeah. Oh, last last year. So, right, this is an exclusive. When we played Wolves on the final day, uh, we won 5 0. On the day. <laughs> no, I actually didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this. I meant to do. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, yeah. Gary. The, 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 five, the final, the day after, I was getting the train back, and a one was sitting next to me on the train. I think. I'm sure that's a one year. And then I was talking to him, like, is that you, yeah? He's like, yeah. He's like, how was the game? Because they played Palace and he actually scored. Honestly, such a, such a sound guy. Such yeah. a sound. You'd think yeah. he'd be sitting in first class. He's just sitting, chilling in the, in the standard. Love it. Um, Love it. Um, Elanga, Elanga is one of those wingers who I look at and I think, 
you have all the sort of like, and similar to Hudson Odoi, you have all the sort of trappings of a really good winger. Reese Nelson, it's these guys who are just there's there's just that extra level that I I don't know whether it's intelligence. I don't know. I don't know. He's a, he's a, he's an extremely reliable player. You would want coming off. He's a the great bench outlook. Sitting, yeah, in terms of sitting oh. deep and 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 the trans on the transition. But yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want him there. I'm not having any Burnley players or Sheffield players. Sheffield United. I tell you, does look good. That Fofana, he looks good. Who? Fofana, the the striker that he's on. Oh, no, David Detrow, he's on over Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, he looks decent. Who's the other one? Sheffield United. Oh, I forget. McAtee looks decent. Trusty. I'll tell you what is. You got to trusty the process, guys. Sorry, the process. You've got to trusty the process, dude. Austin Trusty, I play for Sheffield United. That's I love right, I love soccer. That's actually good. It, it must That's be an American good. in the chat who can tell That's me that was all right. You're honestly that one you did at the start of the show was atrocious. It's not. It's a really good impression. <laughs> you just don't know who he is. Well, there was that other comment in the chat that backed me up. So I got my sample size of one. Oh, I'm ruined. It's my podcast. <laughs> so um, we'll finish there. You're gonna give me uh, my feedback for the show after yeah. So basically, what happens normally is we finish. We we finish. You go, oh, bye, 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 bye. and then he goes, wait, 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 wait. And he's got like a sort of list of things. He's like, when you when you made that point about Southgate earlier, just really try and really try and just just snip it down a little bit. A couple too many too many ums and ahs in there. Yeah, really lovely. At the beginning, the Louis threw impression terrible. Never do it again. Um, when you when you were sharing your screen, you were sort of moving around a little bit too much. I I, I try and keep it on on one screen. I try and keep it on one screen. When you kick me out, that really hurt my feelings. It's it's going to be all that. <laughs> it's going to be all that. So uh, I look forward to that. Um, Rohan, have you enjoyed your podcast? Our podcast. Have you enjoyed our podcast? Yeah, it's been good. It's good fun as always. Okay. Hey, uh, the feedback on um, the episode with James was amazing. Thank you guys so much uh, for your <laughs> that that. Sorry. <laughs> That tells me everything I need to know. <laughs> I was trying to do American. Um, I thought it wasn't too bad. Uh, not too bad. Um, <laughs> I, live with this guy. I live with this guy at uni called Ben, who I won't say anything, but yeah, anyway. Um, but basically, every single day when I came home from school, I go, Bye, oh, Ben, you all right? How you doing? How's your day? And he goes, Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> and he said that he's from Bolton. He said that every day for like two years. Just every day. How's your day, Ben? Yeah, not too bad. That's a, that's a really good Bolton accent. Not that too is, bad. That is and now whenever I hear not too bad, I just hear not too bad. Just Ben sat on my blue sofa. Yeah, it was all right. Not too bad. <laughs> um, let's finish there. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, thank you so much for your feedback on the James episode. Uh, make sure you subscribe to The Different Knock or the different Rohan, as it has been called. The people want touch balls. Do we give it to them? Okay. It's, your, it's your podcast. You're allowed no, to. All right, no, it's all right. Just, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Not too bad to touch balls. Uh, we'll be back 7 p.m. next week. I love that these shows please have a tactical analysis with Ty what, from AFTV. Uh, hang on. I prefer really not to... Um... Not to speak. If... So you have all of these ready. It's just yeah, there. Ready? ready? Oh. I want you to put the word out there that we back up. In the next round, we'll be there. More than you believe. More than you believe. Eric. We cannot. We cannot replace him. A catastrophe. <laughs> got them all, mate. I bet you've got more as well. <laughs> I got all of them. Uh, thanks, as always, for your support. Subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Go find Rohan on Twitter at RJLS on the blog and go read that um, uh, article because it is genuinely really good. I want the feedback um, still. I want the feedback. Oh, you'll be receiving it, mate. Don't you worry. Um, <laughs> thanks as always. Keep it different knock. Keep it Rohan podcast. And we'll see you after we touch some balls. In, in, in. You don't like to touch balls? So I love it. So yeah, come, come. You don't like to touch balls? You don't like to touch balls? Touch balls? Touch balls? You don't like to touch balls? You like to touch what? 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 You like to touch what?